President of the Legislative Council. Members, please note that if members move motions for a German under 16 bracket 2, this can be done only between two items of business, that is between questions and the a German debate on the amendments to the ROP. Just now, three members moved motions under that ROP, and this is my ruling. With regard to Mr. Ray Chan's motion, I know that today is the 18th, 80th anniversary of the Nanjing Massacre. It is a day of historical importance and value, but I cannot see any urgency for it to be debated at today's meeting. As a matter of fact, even if members do not have this debate today, they will not lose the opportunity to express their views on this matter. If members think that there is a need, they can also speak on the commemorative activities on other occasions. As for Mr. Wu Chi Wise and Mr. Eddie Chu's motions, in my written ruling, I have stated clearly the proposed resolutions and amendments have complied with the three-step process in deciding whether the motions should be listed onto the agenda. I have given consideration to all relevant factors in accordance with Article 72, Bracket 2 of the Basic Law and also ROP 19. Members asked to debate issues and it would amount to asking to debate my earlier ruling in this meeting. According to ROP 44, the ruling of the President shall be final and should not be debated. Therefore, Mr. Wu Chi Wai's and Mr. Eddie Chu's motions are not in order. Because of these reasons, I do not allow the request of the three members. Moreover, please let me finish. Moreover, I'd like to point out that the ROP does not include any provisions regarding the conflict of roles of members and the president in chairing the meeting. As a matter of fact, in dealing with this motion on ROP amendments, I do not think that there is any conflict of roles for me to chair this meeting. In fact, according to Article 72, Bracket 1 of the Basic Law, as the President of the Legislative Council, I have the constitutional duty to chair meetings of the Legislative Council according to the Basic Law. Mr. Eddie Chu, President, you mentioned that you are of the view that my German motion is worded in such a way that I'm challenging ROP 44, meaning that your ruling should not be debated. In fact, that is not my intention. I hope you are aware that when I explained why I wanted to move the motion, I particularly pointed out that we were not trying to challenge your ruling, but rather when the voting arrangements and also, in your letter dated the 27th of November, you said that the appropriate way was for the Legislative Council to decide whether the Legislative Council should adopt the proposal by Mr. Martin Liao to lower the committee membership. But the voting arrangement is such that there is no way for members to have an independent voting on Mr. Martian Liao's proposal to reduce the committee membership to 20. That is why I like to have um, an adjournment motion to single out this item because it is of public concern. And also legal advice sought by the Legislative Council thinks that this may be in contravention of the basic law. I'm not saying that it must contravene the basic law. And in fact, I'm not challenging your ruling. I hope you can consider my view. Mr. Eddie Chu, thank you for asking that question. In fact, I already made 
the ruling. It was an earlier ruling. I ruled on Mr. Martin Liao's item, and Mr. Martin Liao submitted one proposed resolution. Therefore, we cannot separately vote on the different items within that resolution. This is in accordance with the ROP. We do not allow separate voting on a single proposed resolution. The speaker is not on the microphone. Whether this is out of order, I have already made my ruling. Of course, members will have time to speak after the motion under Rule 40 brackets 1. If the um, debate is adjourned, there won't be any further debates. Otherwise, there would be ample time to speak. The speaker is not coming through the microphone. I realize that members might have different views for motions moved under Rule 16 brackets 2, but I have made my ruling based on convention, so I cannot allow these three members to move motions under Rule 16 brackets 2. According to Rule 16 brackets 2, the most important criterion in considering whether the motions are permitted is public importance or issue of urgent public importance. We hope you can share a copy of your ruling to all Legislative Council members. You said this could be um, this issue could be discussed on another occasion. You might as well tell President Xi Jinping to um, carry out the remembrance on another day instead of today. As for the um, the twelve proposed amendments and 23 amending amendments on the basic law, which are members' motions. Are you telling the people and the country that amendments to the ROP is more important than um, debating the um, anniversary of the Nanjing massacre? It would only take a matter of hours at most. I hope you would um, reconsider your decision. The speaker is not coming through. The speaker is not coming through the microphone. Mr. Ray Chan. I understand that you have deep feelings on this issue. I visited the um, the 80th anniversary memorial of the um, Nanjing massacre on behalf of the Legislative Council already. First of all, I have made my ruling based on the um, element of urgent public importance according to Rule 16 brackets 2. As I said, members might have different views. And the Legislative Council is not the only occasion to voice such views. Mr. Paul Chair, President, if you allow members to speak on your ruling, this is a, a breach of Rule 44. President, there's no need to um, waste further time on this debate or allow further speeches. Members' motions. Mr. Wu Chi what Paul Chair meant. Is that the president would not have to um, uphold justice in, in the council? Members' motions, Mr. Wu Chi Members raise their views on your ruling. Isn't this something um, normal at the legislative council? But um, according to Paul Chair, Rule 44 would um, give you unlimited powers. If that is the case, there is no need to amend the ROP at all. I dealt with the point of order raised by Paul Chair.
there is some um, an urgency to my motion to adjourn. And um, our former presidents Jasper Chang and um, Wang Wang Fat said that the amendments to the LP might be unconstitutional. And according to Jasper Chang, he said Philip Bustring is um, the, uh, is normal among members, and this is an important element of one country, two systems. So I hope um, the president would pause and um, allow us to think for a moment how we proceed. And um, while we consider the issue, there might be multiple motions instead of one motion so that members can um, voice their views. So uh, this is the um, this is essential to a motion to adjourn. If this is not possible, the um, ensuing debate would be meaningless. The real um, issues worth supporting might be masked, and um, we cannot um, garner support from the procession camp as well. The um, threshold for making a petition will be raised from 20 to 35, but uh, some procession members might not necessarily agree, but their hands are tied. So um, through a motion to adjourn, Mr. Martin Liao can um, revisit his resolutions, and um, he could um, separate them instead of bundling them together. So um, there are no um, restrictions whatsoever, but um, when we proceed to the vote, we can um, have our own judgments imposed. Mr. Wu Chiwai, the council has been suspended for more than one hour to um, consider your motion, and I also met you and I took in your views and um, based on I made a ruling based on convention. I realize that different members might have different views or different people might have different views, including two former legislative council presidents, but um, they would still um, respect my ruling because we are dealing with the um, current legislative council. I hope you would also respect my decision. I realize you have different views. I have urged the um, establishment and non-establishment camp to talk and negotiate to see if there's any um, room. Yesterday when I met Mr. Dennis Kwok, I reminded him that there is room for discussion or negotiation for Rule 41 and the um, debate proper. Members can have a debate within and outside of the Legislative Council. The agenda has been tabled, so um, we should try to um, proceed with it. Ms. Eddie Chu, I have a question about the choice of wording. You said um, we are non pro establishment members. So, in, in other words, you suggested that Mr. Dennis Kwok is part of the um, non pro establishment camp. Mr. Dennis Kwok never used as such to um, address himself. This is not a point of order. When the um, deputy presides over the meeting, I'm happy to address this question. Um, this is a point of order. Mr. Charles Ma. On the 29th of February 2012, Ms. Sit Ho cited Rule 16, Brackets 2 of the ROP. And um, she um, proposed a, a motion on the um, conducts of the chief executive um, youth and the uh, fairness of the chief executive election. She moved a motion to adjourn proceedings, and the um, then president, Mr. Jasper Chang, said that since um, he publicly stated that he was interested in the um, chief executive role, he couldn't. Um, make such ruling. So he invited the um, deputy at the time, which um, was yourself, if I'm correct. You exercise the power of the Legislative Council president. Um, it, sh it should be um, Miriam Lau. Uh, 
she approved this motion um, moved by Ms. Sit Ho under Rule 16 brackets 2. Ms. Daddy Chu, well, um, you, you said um, there are no issues with your ruling, but um, there was a precedent in which the um, Letro president felt that um, his or her role was in conflict. The president would not take part in the ruling. So um, there was certainly a, a precedent, unlike what you suggested. Mr. Charles Ma, you cited a very clear example. The then president did say he wanted to run for chief executive, so there was a conflict of roles. But in the, the current scenario, I do not feel that there is a conflict of roles, so um, there is no need for me to invite the deputy to preside over the meeting. So um, there is a fundamental difference in both cases. The speaker is not coming through the microphone. Mr. Charles Ma, last Sunday, the deputy voiced her views publicly. And um, she also um, joined a um, or signed a petition supporting Mr. Martin Liao's amendments. This was um, my ruling, not the deputy's. So um, this is irrelevant to any um, conflict of interest with the deputy. Members motions at the meeting of 6th of December 2017. Mr. Kikikwa, President, according to Article 1 of the Basic Law, the Hong Kong SAR is an inalienable, inalienable part of the People's Republic of China. The um, President of, of um, the national um, president went to Nanjing to attend a remembrance. So, um, would amending the ROP be more important than the 80th anniversary of the Nanjing massacre? Um, so, uh, members like Paul Chair should be supportive. They should support the adjournment so that we can um, discuss the Nanjing massacre. And a lot of um, members very patriotic. I have explained my ruling in detail already. Mr. Ray Chen, President, you talked about the deputy. According to Article 75, the um, deputy cannot um, preside over, over the meeting, or are you going to preside over the meeting until the end? The deputy stood in um, in place of the president according to the ROP, and her role is to preside over LegCo meetings. So um, she does not need to make any rulings. He would only make decisions on procedural matters. So there is no conflict of roles. I have been deputy on many occasions. And I was only um, standing in um, for the president, Miss Claudia Mo. Thank you, President. All of us, including the public, know that the Lechko president or deputy should be completely fair and partial. And impartial. I would not dwell on whether there is any conflict of in of role from you, but for Starry Lee. There is certainly, there is obviously a conflict. I hope the legal advisor can explain the issue. Um, you said the deputy is not involved in um, rulings, but the um, truth is otherwise. So uh, it was a slip of tongue from you, obviously. I hope the secretariat, the secretary general, and the legal advisor to um, offer their views. What I said was the um, deputy's role is to preside over electrical meetings for other rulings or uh, amendments.
for items on the agenda, I would be the one making the rulings. So the deputy's role is very clear according to the ROP. I don't see any conflicts of roles with the deputy. And as I said, there are no provisions in the ROP between um, on the um, conflicts of roles between members and the president presiding over the meeting. Uh, Ms. Claudia Mo, thank you. You preside over meetings. We attend meetings. But there are basic principles. There is also some political uh, ethics in play. You say that, well, on the face of it, there are no problems, so there is no problem. Uh, you ask yourself, the role of uh, Ms. Dari Lee, there is no conflict of interest, uh, no conflict of roles. I ask you to say it again. Ms. Dari Lee, I think that uh, Ms. Claudia Mo and other members have mentioned about uh, role, a conflict of old role. And it is not a uh, point of order. And under the ROP, you see that uh, there is a no pecuniary interest involved. Members here ha all have very clear stance when it comes to the rules of procedure. The rules of procedure. So I do think that there is an abuse of uh, points of order, because points of orders are allowed when. Um, Questions are made related to our procedure, not a chance for them to speak their mind. Mr. Lam Chuk Ting, President, you said that uh, there was no rules in the in the ROP governing that. When in the effect that, that there is no need for the member to be excused when there is a conflict of role. But this is natural justice. If there is serious conflict of roles, of course, the person will have to be excused. Can you clarify? Is it going to be your principle and your approach from now on? Because that would be very scary. Because when someone clearly has a, a, role, a conflict of roles, then uh, you will say that there, is, there are no rules under the ROP to limit that. I have already said it very clearly about, uh, about the relevant rules. If you have questions or problems with that rule, please talk to our legal advisor or talk to your own legal advisor. At the meeting of 6 of December 2017, this council already commenced a joint debate on the 12 proposed resolutions under Article 75 of the Basic Law of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China and the 23 amending motions. During the debate, Honorable Alvin Yeung moved a motion under Rule 40, bracket 1 of the Rules of Procedure that the debate be now adjourned. This council now continues with the debate on the adjournment motion. Dr. Fernando Zhang, this is a point of order. We had uh, spent some time to discuss whether there were there is any conflict of roles in relation to you yourself and Ms. Starry Lee. So I would like to get a clarification. Of course, members here will have certain political stance. However, when one be when one sits on the um chair of the president, then the person will have to um act in accordance with the rules of procedure and that should never be any deviation. So can you tell us whether Ms. Starry Lee has abide by those principles? First of all, as president, I act in accordance with the basic law and ROP as well as convention of the LegCo when I preside over meetings and make rulings. When Ms. Dari Lee was the deputy, she abide by the same set of rules as well. Dr. Fernando Jung, you may now speak. President, I speak in support of Mr. Alvin Young's motion under Rule 40, bracket 1, to adjourn the debate. Mr. Young moves this motion to adjourn in the hope that we will immediately adjourn the debate on um, resolute proposed resolutions under Article 75 of the Basic Law to amend the uh, rules of procedure of the LegCo. This motion to adjourn has 
urgency and it is necessary. The meeting arrangements has come to a, a point where it is unprecedented. In order to pass the proposed resolutions to amend the ROP, you yourself, President, has already, have already decided that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday there will be whole day meetings. If the meeting does not finish, then it will be continued on Monday. There are four panel meetings affected. They are scheduled to take place on Monday. One of them is the Subcommittee on um, the Rights of Children. We have made arrangements to have a public hearing. Over 40 deputations and individuals will come to speak to us about care to ch young children. There is an urgency and that and it is necessary to have this public hearing because in the first quarter of 2018 the administration will announce the findings of a consultancy report this is uh, done by the Hong Kong U and it's about planning on uh, care to young children if we do not give views to the consultant and to Hong Kong U in time there may be inadequacies in this plan. So there is no necessity for us to have the um, debate on proposed resolution. And President, you said there is no urgency to have um, debate on the anniversary of the uh, Nanjing massacre. So I don't see any urgency to discuss the proposed resolutions. What's the difference between having it done before or after Christmas? Ms. Claudia Mo, I asked Dr. Fernando John to clarify, and I understand that uh, mem when a member clarifies or elucidates, um, the time is not counted to us, it's a lot of time. I asked Dr. John to uh, clarify because he said that, um, that the motion to adjourn is urgent, and he said that the subcommittee on the rights of children is equally urgent. So I want to ask him. The 80th anniversary of uh, Nanjing Massacre, compared to this motion to adjourn, which has a bigger urgency, I did not hear it. Miss Claudia Mo, I am of the view that you abused. Uh, the uh, point of order, Dr. Zhang. Well, just let me quickly clarify. Ms. Mo was talking about a, a number of issues. Ms. Mr. Alvin Young moves the motion under Rule 40, bracket 1 to adjourn the debate. There is an urgency because if we do not sus uh, adjourn the debate, then the subcommittee chaired by me in relation to um, care to young children scheduled on Monday will be affected. And I just explained about the urgency because there is a deadline. The review on the services will have to be completed before the first quarter of 2018. If we, cannot, if we do not give uh, our views in time, then there will be shortfall when it comes to planning for care to young children. There is an urgency. If we do not adjourn the debate on the proposed resolutions to amend the ROP, and, and if we follow the arrangements made by the President, livelihood issues that are of urgency, policy formulation to improve care given to young children will be affected. So I fail to understand why you will make such arrangements. You say, well, four days in a row to have to have this meeting. Fine. Do it all the way till Saturday. There are four panel meetings scheduled on Monday. And some people have already taken leave from their work or they have made arrangements uh, for someone else to babysit their children in order to attend the public meeting, uh, public hearing.
how can we allow the operation of a panel meeting to be affected? And a number of mem members have already made a point about the amendments to the ROP and whether it contravenes the basic law. This is a fundamental and important issue. If it contravenes the basic law, then the debate we have today may give rise to constitutional crises. We don't intend to challenge your ruling. If you think uh, there needs to be a debate, and then um, to have uh, to vote on this, of course, this is your ruling. But don't forget that at the beginning, when you have accepted the proposed uh, amendment to reduce the number of we restore the quorum of the committee stage you have asked for legal advice and the legal advice sought stated that uh, this will contravene the basic law that's very clear however the loyalists said that well the quorum can be reduced to 20 in relation to the committee's uh, stage. Does it contravene the basic law? I think we need further legal advice. However, President, you have not asked for further legal advice. Isn't this an inadequacy? Where proposals to make are made to amend the ROP, and if there is a chance that the basic law is breached, and should someone takes out a judicial review, and and should the court decide that this these amendments is unconstitutional, then there is a crisis. So where is the urgency that we have to do this today, do this before Christmas, when we have to? When we are asked to endorse something uh, that are not legally sound, something that may trigger a constitutional crisis, the proposed the uh, proposed amendment to the ROP is not mature, and there is no urgency. Of course, to the loyalists, the urgency lies in seizing the opportunity when others are in a difficult position, when six uh, pan Democrats have been disqualified. We became the minority in the geographical constituencies. You are the president. You have just answered me. You said that I made a stance. That is, regardless of our political views, because we are legislators. Of course, we have our political views. We have different stance, but. When you are the when you are the president or you act for the president, then you should be impartial, impartial, and should not tip towards a certain side. Regrettably, that's not what I see. If this results in. It's not something that I want to see, but it's very uh, probable. If it results in a court uh, a litigation, I don't know how the court will deal with this proposed proposed amendment to the ROP. If someone challenges us in the court, this will put the court in a very difficult position. It's just like uh, at least uh, two judicial review cases involving the president or the chairman of the finance committee. The issue was whether uh, the chairman and the president in presiding over meetings, whether they have done anything that have breached the basic law. And if we do need to get a judgment from the court and if the judgment Turns, um, turns over the um, decision to amend the ROP. 
Can you imagine how embarrassing it will be for yourself and the loyalists? You talk about this joint debate to group everything under one roof, and then the, and the most important amendment is unconstitutional. Don't you think it's a bit too rushed, too rushed, and immature? Công cần lệ. Aren't you craving for success too hastily? Is the majority using this? A hundred-year return opportunity to amend basic ROPs. When the council comes to such a stage, Mr. President, all our procedures, whether it is the first, second, third readings of a bill, first of all, the bill should be referred to a panel. Then it is the subject of a bills committee. And after detailed scrutiny, the bill goes through all the stages, and then it comes here. Then we have a debate, and then we vote on it. There is wisdom in such a procedure. It is the product of years and years of wisdom. It is not a, a very simple process of the council, Mr. President. I don't think we have a quorum. Can I ask for a quorum count?
。張超榮議員。Dr. Fernando Zhang, President, I was saying that processes in our OP are a product of the accumulation of wisdom of our predecessors, and the guiding principle is that there should be a process. Checks and balance, and for different voices to be represented, and that we should give consideration to all relevant factors, because power has to be checked and balanced against. This is this. There is this platitude that power corrupts. We should not just go for efficiency. Absolute power leads to absolute corruption. So、um, we need certain procedures in place as checks and balances. If we just talk about efficiency, dictatorship is the most efficient form of governance. If the、um, emperor says something, it must be followed, and there is no room for any discussion. So that would be the most. Efficient manner, but it doesn't mean that it's the best way or the fairest way of going about things. It doesn't mean that、um, different people or stakeholders would agree with it, and eventually we will only see conflict and chaos. So、um, the world's dictators are often ended by war, and、um, with a new dictatorship, another cycle. Of conflicts will ensue, so that's why、um, there needs to be checks and balances and democracy in our system, and we need procedures in place. And these procedures are the results of years or decades of experience. A lot of academics, including Professor So from the Hong Kong. UST, To Yuming from Baptist University,、um, Maya and、um, Cha Po Chong from the Chinese University, etc. They said that amendments to the ROP is not to、um, control filibustering, but the most significant impact is that the、um, Lechko's role of monitoring the government would be hugely jeopardized. By raising the threshold for making petitions from 20 to 35, we made three such petitions before to investigate、um, Mr. Timothy Tong, the、um, delays in the XLL project, and CY Learn or the Link Reads, etc. These. If your approval is needed to form these select committees, they can never be created. If you raise the threshold to 35 members, then you would have the vetoing power, and it would be hard to convene any select committees at Lechko in the future to、um, investigate such corruptions or budget overruns or deficiencies in our systems. By amending the ROP, you want the Lechko to lose its. Power to monitor the government is that your ultimate mission at the、um, procession camp. You are vetoing all investigations, and the president holds all powers. Is that the way to solve all problems in Hong Kong, Mr. Kent Lang? Ms. Elvin Yeo, move the motion to adjourn under Rule Forty Brackets One of the RP and base an article. Seventy-five of the Basic Law. I support Mr. Yang's motion. I will not speak in depth on any of the proposed resolutions of the amendments of ROP. I want to explain my principles in supporting the motion to adjourn. First of all, a matter of principle. Mr. Martin Liao moved 26 um, proposals in his proposed、um, proposed resolutions, and many of the amendments would jeopardize the interests of Lechko and disrupt 
its operation. I'd like to talk about some um, fundamental principles on what this um, parliament or other parliaments around the world are doing. The roots of the word parliament came from the French word parler, P A R L E R. Parler means to speak in French. Legislators have the right to speak, to criticize the government, and to um, debate on policy issues. I will not speak at length about the um, changes within the proposed resolutions. But when we look at the um, changes proposed by Mr. Martin Liao, especially on um, Rule 30 and 57 of the ROP, they um, jeopardize the basic right to speak for members, which is a very fundamental right. This is not just a right under the basic law. But this is a um, the most fundamental right in parliaments around the world. I can tell you a story, President. What is happening now at the Hong Kong SAL happened 2,400 years ago. As you know, the modern parliament stemmed from Athens in Greece. In um, about 500 BC, um, there was a um, parliamentary system in ancient Greece. So um, what happened 2,400 years ago? Well, recently um, the um, president has called for extra meetings, and um, the, the two are actually related. And um, for the, there was a very famous philosopher called Socrates, and um, he was the father of philosophy. He f often criticized the government and contemplated um, life. And because he said too much, the Greek government was unhappy with him, and um, they arrested Socrates. And um, they sent Socrates to the court. And um, the issue was was merely that he said too much, but he um, did not make any um, mistakes. And the um, trial took place in three three hundred ninety nine BC. The trial was not conducted by judges. But by two, but by five hundred and one members of the public, and um, they decided whether um, Socrates was guilty for saying too much, and the result was that a slight majority um, th thought that Socrates was guilty, and um, he should be given a death sentence for saying too much. So um, the current um, amendments or proposed amendments to the RP is akin to a death sentence. Some members often criticize the government and they comment on policies. So um, this was an example 2,400 years ago, and today we are repeating um, such tragedy. The um, members from the um, pro-democracy camp will explain why we should not be amending the ROP at this juncture. But um, a more fundamental issue is um, procedural justice. In the previous term of LegCo, well, I wasn't a member of the committee on ROP. We met every two months. 
and um, I was not against amendments to the ROP. But um, in the last term, I visited the House of Commons in Westminster, and a lot of members also um, made the visit. And when I came back, I proposed a substantial change to the ROP. And um, members from the last term would remember that when this was debated at the Council, for non-binding members' motions, apart from amendments to the ROP, the president actually has discretion to um, the, to allow members to make amendments to amendments. And um, I made reference to um, studies at West Westminster. And I realized that the amendments to amendments would um, increase the workload of the Secretariat. And um, even members making such amendments to amendments would not know um, what they want to express. And um, the public would also be very confused. To amend a member's motion, one simply has to move an amendment by the deadline. I made this proposal and um, I had to wait a few months before it was discussed at the um, Committee on ROP and there was a one-month consultation period. The proposal was also discussed at the House Committee and um, Members agreed to a vote at the HC. Over the course of the debate and the vote, 57 members at the House Committee supported the amendment. But of course, some members felt that the amendment would um, jeopardize members' right to speak. President. I would support Mr. Elvin Young's motion to adjourn under Rule 40, brackets 1, because um, the amendments or proposed amendments to the ROP are not just procedurally, and um, there has not there has not been any consultation, and um, you. You you want to um, push these amendments through by the eleventh of March for the um, exercise I mentioned. It took a full six months, and members reached a um, general consensus on the amendments to the ROP for the um, twenty six proposed resolutions from um, Mr. Martin Liao plus fifty odd. Resolutions by the um, pro democracy camp, and there was only a consultation period of one week or so, and they are now being debated. The um, pro establishment camp might say that this is a political reality. They are just trying to capitalize. If this is the case, the legislative council would only become a battlefield, and this is not something I want to see. And I'm sure many members would agree. I'd like to talk about the um, quorum of the whole committee of the Legislative Council according to the basic law. I considered this issue a few years ago, and I had a discussion with the Secretariat. Um, everyone is talking about efficiency at LegCo, but this efficiency is not absolute. The um, quality of the debate or discussions is also important. The President 
received two sets of advice from the um, SE and QC, and lowering the threshold from 35 to 20 um, is potentially risky from a constitutional point of view. And this is not a decision that should be made by a president of a council. And um, like Dr. Financial Chang and other members said, you should seek clearer legal advice on this issue. Even though the uh, pro-establishment camp has um, offered a different um, kind of legal advice, you should seek another set of advice in um, before you decide whether to um, allow these amendments. This will be a. This would have been a normal procedure. You might say that. Um, well, we have less than three months to complete this, so it is not a normal circumstance. If you say that, well, this is a. This was a result in a death sentence, but we have majority members here, so let's go ahead. And I will find that really re regrettable. Every rule in the rules of procedure are interrelated. Mr. Martin Liu may be a very experienced lawyer, and he said that, well, there are still some loopholes. I know that he spent the entire summer going through the ROP. I still ask him to listen to more views. If you say that these amendments are to boost efficiency, then I need to t remind you that efficiency is equally important as quality. No, no one single person can iron out all the um, irregularities or inconsistencies by that person's uh, on that person's own. When it comes to the entire set of rules of procedure, and if all these proposed amendments are endorsed, well, I hope that. Rules that have been carelessly amended, amended, so that um, in a way that they ended, they end up being a unsuitable, flawed. I hope that members will calmly deal with amendments I put forward in the future to deal with that. I hope that members will spend some time to go through these uh, amendments. Even when this council dies, I hope to resurrect it. That is the reason why I support Mr. Young's motion. I so submit. Mr. Jeremy Tam. Mr. President, I speak in support of Mr. Alvin Young's motion to adjourn under Rule 40 bracket 1 of the Rules of Procedure to uh, on the joint debate on uh, proposed resolutions under Article 75 of the Basic Law of the Hong Kong SAR of the PRC. I do think that we need to stop and think. I, we can see from this morning's petition that um, there is a need for these petitions, and I asked us other members to reflect whether they feel the same. I think that um, this morning gave us a chance to 
reconsider whether there is a need to go ahead with um, proposals to increase uh, the quorum for uh, the number of persons required for uh, for petition. And this morning, of course, um, well, we expected Pan Pan Democrats will stand um, in relation to the petition related to the link. Uh, to our surprise, Mrs. Regina Ip stood up and she tried to get her neighbour, Ms. Eunice Yong, to stand up as well. Of course, uh, that was uh, to no avail. And I felt that, well, a little bird has started to spread its wings, ready to fly on its own. Well, it's not as simple as asking uh, a loyalist to, to stand up in a petition. Well, they are practically from the same camp, and it was difficult. What do you think will happen in when it time when the time comes to vote? The voting on Martin Liu's amendment will cover everything, including the pers the number of persons required under petition to form a select com committee. It will be increased to thirty five people. Perhaps a she, Mrs. Regina, it would reconsider because if that happened, then what happened this morning would not have would not happen in the future. A lot of people are very concerned about the link. I have done some uh, research. Uh, Kenneth Lau, uh, uh, Edward Edward Lau, um, of the AB said that uh, they tried to approach the link many times, and in uh, 2009, um, Ms. Alice Mack of the FTU said that in relation to the change of um, terms for securities, they tried to approach the link. However, um, in the end, it ended up in lawyers' correspondence. Mr. Lam Chok Teng uh, said that um, their personal, uh, their uh, public relations have done really poorly, uh, threatening that, uh, well, if you uh, come to us again, we would call the police and would uh, refuse to talk to you. And also Andrew uh, Wen said that um, they try, the link tried to divide them, saying that, well, we have sent someone uh, to your meeting, so, well, careful what you say, and, um, well, you should talk to us first. So you see that they use many different ways, threats, um, coercion, however, only one person from the loyalists, loyalist camp stood up. It was um, Mrs. Regina Ip. So if the rules, if the rule change, changes to 35 people, then what happened this morning will, will not have happened. And that is included in the basket of amendments proposed by Mr. Martin Liu. I don't think it's possible that Mrs. Regina Ip would vote against Mr. Liu's amendment. She might very much want to take this rule, this amendment out because she benef she could see the benefit of this rule this morning. But this can't be done because when you vote, you vote for the whole thing. Everything's bundled up. So I strongly support Mr. Alvin Young's motion to adjourn so that people will have time to think. People from different parties can think. Some rules should not be changed. And I would like to talk about um, Amendment 2, Rule 20, that is in relation to petition. 20 will become half of um, the entire council, that is 35 people. But there is another thing. I don't know how many members 
notice that it's actually uh, under rule 20 bracket 6 there is a word changed select committee becomes house committee so if you if there are 35 people that would not be a select committee it will be referred to the house committee do you understand so the um Establish so the setting up of a select committee by way of a petition will not happen because even if you can get 35 people to stand up, it will not be a select committee. That rule alone should be taken out so that members can reconsider if they really want to see it changed in this way. So it's not just a problem of the number of people. Even when you have enough people uh, stand up, it will the matter will be referred to the House Committee and not a Select Committee. This is to amend um, Rule 20, Presentation of Petitions. The first part is about this. Go and read the, the wordings. So we need to stop and think. So if the President would only stop the game when they have scored and it is to be done at any cost. Well, we see that some of the other members asked for an adjournment to discuss some, something else and that was the, re, uh, refused. Today is the 80th and of, uh, commemoration of the um, Nanjing massacre. The president said that he had attended um, service he attended a service already on our behalf and that suffices well we want to ask the council to vote on our, our demand to get the Japanese government to uh, apologize for the Nanjing massacre did he uh, did he even consider that perhaps uh, we we will be given shorter time and then it will be put to a vote and that would only cost you an hour at least uh, we would have a chance to vote on whether we think uh, that n needs to be done It seems that uh, there is something wrong with our priority. Is the amendment to ROPs so urgent that no time should be lost? Do we really need to uh, vote on these amendments on Monday? The President's ruling has made it very clear. He practically said that, well, as long as it's not done, the meetings will continue. I think it's uh, a contravention of the employment, terms of employment. It's as if you said to uh, your employee, well, you will have to continue to wash the dishes until everything is done. You can't work um, your employees to death. But that's exactly the ruling of the president. Don't think you can finish work before you finish all the dishes in the world. That's practically his ruling. We have to work uh, all, the way, all the way through Monday. This is not proportional. Is this our only mission, our only work to do, to press and vote on these amendments? Are we so driven on the... Um, On the to the uh, to to get what is done in the end, every member will only have fifteen minutes in the debate to talk about this huge number of amendments and issues. 
If I say what amendments they are and whether I support or oppose to it, you can't say that I have digressed if I do that. But can I do that in within 15 minutes? If that can't be done within 15 minutes, isn't it outrageous? Because I don't even have time, sufficient time to say whether I support or oppose to um, all these amendments. That's why I support this motion to adjourn. Well, you see that um, members have changed. They are not the people I, I, I see them before. What is primitive in their nature is coming out. Um, normally, you may say that uh, this person is quite gentlemanly and he respects women, but then suddenly I see Mr. Paul Chair jumping out in a fierce manner, saying that he said he could blurt out a string of uh, invective, and then he also powered himself over Dr. Helena Wong, but he was wearing a suit. I couldn't imagine him doing that. And that is why I'm saying many members have become something else. They seem to be very different people. They have been packaging themselves so nicely all these years, but for the sake of these ROP, they have torn away that packaging. That is why I support the adjournment motion, Madam Deputy, so we can halt and think. You have been trying to build your image and people's support for you. Please do not throw that away overnight. Madam Deputy, if at all possible, I hope uh, members, that we can do this. There are these voluminous amendments. It is not possible to give each one just 15 minutes. And it is not going to just affect this term. It will affect all the terms of this council ever after. As you know, it's difficult to undo the damage. Now, there is so much tension. The rules of procedure should be there to protect the minority and their voices. If everything, sorry, uh, Miss Elizabeth Quatt, what is your point of order? Please switch on the microphone. Madam Deputy, I feel that Mr. Jeremy Tam described uh, Mr. Paul Chair for overpowering Dr. Helena Wong in the meeting last week. I think that is very offensive. I was there last week and I think that that was not the case, so I think this is problematic. Ms. Elizabeth Quatt, if you'd like to comment on Mr. Jeremy Tam's speech, please do so when it is your turn to speak. Mr. Jeremy Tam, please. Do not use offensive language against other members. Mr. Paul Chair, thank you, Ms. Elizabeth Quatt, for raising that point. Um, there is no offensive term as such, but the overall description by Mr. Jeremy Tam amounted to an accusation against me, saying that it was what I did was offensive to Dr. Helena Wong. I think this is worse than direct offense. I hope he would not um, package his criticism like that. Again, Mr. Pocher, if you'd like to respond to the comments made by Mr. Jeremy Tam, please wait. Please wait till I finish. You can do so when it is your turn to speak. I understand you are making a point of order, but please sit down. I am saying that if you'd like to respond to what other members say, Please press the request to speak button. And Mr. Paul Chair, if you are of the view that Mr. Jeremy Tam's comments are offensive, Madam Deputy, please make a ruling. Mr. Jeremy Tam, uh, 
I am aware that you referred to the meeting last week. During the adjournment of the meeting, something happened, and Mr. Po Chen and Ms. Elizabeth Quad both expressed um, their feeling that they felt having been offended. I'd like you to pay attention to the wording you use during your speech. But uh, I cannot see any offensive term. Thank you for your wisdom, Madam Deputy. But uh, Mr. Tam, please be very careful what you say. I hope members will not seek to offend other members when they speak. It will be difficult for this meeting to continue to debate. Mr. Po Chair, what is your point of order? Well, if that's the case, if that is your logic, no members would offend other members. He might not be using an offensive term, but what he described was extremely offensive. He was referring to the procedure of this meeting, but he was also trying to criticize other members. Uh, this is quite shameful. Uh, he said that I was wearing a suit. He is now wearing a suit. I think that is also shameful. I, Mr. Pocha, I don't think you should speak on my ruling. You are asking for me to make a ruling. What is your request, Mr. Pocha? Mr. Pocha has retracted his remark. Let me clarify. Please do not continue with the clock. First of all, Mr. Paul Chair said something and then he retracted it immediately. Was that shameful? Was that a shame? I really think that he is smart. Mr. Jeremy Tan, please continue. I'm now continuing to speak. Madam Deputy, this is exactly what you see, that the primitive temperament is all exposed. In fact, I did not say anything offensive. It was an objective description. What was what happened. Mr. Paul Chair was trying to overpower Dr. Helene Wong by walking very close to her. It was an objective fact, it, and the film could be seen on the internet. I, I watched that many times before I said it. I, I will let him speak. Please wait, Mr. Jeremy Tam. Mr. Paul Chair, if you'd like to speak, I will remind you that you please press the request to speak button. Please wait. This is an abuse of uh, the rules of procedure. Is that right? It happens every time. Dr. Helena Wong, what is the point of order? A point of order. I do agree with Mr. Paul Chair. I believe, Mr. Madam Deputy, you should make a ruling and also clarify whether what Mr. Jeremy Tam said was the fact. I was very in, involved, and at that time, I already shouted loudly to ask Mr. Paul Chen not to touch my stuff. And then he pushed away the placard I was holding with his hand, and then his entire person pressed against me. And that is why I say what Mr. Jeremy Tam said was very correct. Sorry, please sit down. This is not a point of order. Dr. Helena Wong is not coming through. Her mic is not on. Dr. Helena Wong is not coming through to the interpreters. I already made a ruling. Mr. Jeremy Tam, please continue. Dr. Wong is not coming through to the interpreters. Mr. Jeremy Tam, please continue. Yes, thank you, Madam Deputy. Just now we were all agreed there was no offence. I just described what happened. Madam Deputy also made a ruling. I don't know why Mr. Poche is still shouting. If you want to speak, wait till it's your turn to speak. See, this is getting out of control. Please adjourn the debate. Mr. James Toe. Uh, Madam Deputy.
on the face of it, we are debating a matter relating to the rules of procedure. But I believe we are debating one country, two systems. Therefore, I have a heavy heart in the past 20 days. This is the crunch time. Madam Deputy, first, I have to say I support the adjournment motion for these reasons. Last year, at around the same time in December, we knew Si Wai Leung was not seeking a second term for whatever reason, and that's not the important thing. And we believed that it was because the central authorities did not want him to have a second term. Why? We then had the hope that Hong Kong society would be given the opportunity to go back to the right track. And the division in the last few years could be mended gradually. At the time, we nurtured some hope. And incidentally, a reporter would have an interview with me at about 5 o'clock over what happened last year. And so I collected myself and reviewed these past few years. During the election, Carrie Lam was returned. And then on the 1st of July, Xi Jinping gave quite a good speech. People with very different views and even uh, people with opposing views, he, he thought, could still communicate with one another. And in October, Zhang Xiaoming wrote an article. He said the so-called overall jurisdiction was targeting a minority of people, not the majority. And it was clear that it was very different from the combative words and actions he showed in the last few years. Actually, we had the opportunity to wait for an opportunity because all powers are concentrated in Xi Jinping after the 19th Party Congress. We thought there would be a working group to review the governance of Hong Kong in the past 20 years and how it should continue. Recently, Mr. Jesper Zhang had adopted a high profile. He wrote many articles, one of which targeted um, at the rules of procedure. And he said, within one country, two systems, there are three essential points. Number one, that there is the opposition camp. Secondly, that the opposition camp can overrule the legislation of the administration. This is not possible on the mainland. And number three, the opposition camp can use the rules of procedure to delay or disrupt or overthrow the funding requests and legislative proposals of the administration. He thought that these are the essential points of one country, two systems. Up to now, I haven't heard any members of the pro-establishment camp refuting it, particularly the heavyweights of the pro-establishment camp. I have quoted Mr. Jesper Zhang seven, eight times, and he did not come out to negate my understanding. If indeed, Madam Deputy, the essential points of one country, two systems are such that the minority, but of course we are actually the majority when it comes to the number of votes, but because of this distorted kind of election, we become the minority. If the quintessence of one country, two systems is to allow the minority in the Legislative Council to make use of the rules of procedure and to throw out unreasonable legislation or funding requests or at least to delay them, then, Madam Deputy, I must say, and this is very solemn, anyone seeking to amend these of rules of procedure is, in fact, going against one country, two systems. You are going against what Deng Xiaoping said years ago when he formulated this idea of one country, two systems. 
if my argument is overall correct, well, maybe Mrs. Carrie Lam would say she would want to have smooth governance. Well, that would not change. And some pro-establishment members might genuinely believe that they should sit here and listen to the pro-democracy camp speak nonsense. Well, of course, that's from their angle. And they are debarred from doing more important matters. Well, those are legal matters, like they would like to go to the horse race, for example. If this is really against the intentions of one country, two systems, it would be a very serious matter. Madam Deputy, we should think about the um, meaning of one country, two systems. It serves to convince Hong Kong people and in the context of China, People can be proud of being a Chinese in Hong Kong, and we can talk about the China dream. The intention of one country, two systems is to tell our Taiwanese counterparts that Hong Kong enjoys protections under one country, two systems, and the opposition has its rights, and they can go against malicious laws and engage in filibustering as a tactic. Madam Deputy, the basic law serves to convince the world that Hong Kong has different systems in place. Madam Deputy, unfortunately, we have not been able to um, resolve the conflicts of CY Lung's five years at the helm. And um, with this exercise to amend the ROP, the conflict seemed to get more and more serious. Point of order, call for quorum. Mr. Ted Ho calls for quorum. <laughs>
会议恢复。Meeting resumed. Will members please return to your seats? Mr. James Toh. Madam Deputy, I was talking about the amendments to the ROP, and to this extent, the majority representing the people actually becomes the minority in this council, and this is against the intention of one country, two systems. Madam Deputy, in light of this, I believe we should suspend the discussion of this issue such that members from the pro-establishment camp can rethink. And it's not just confined to the pro-establishment camp, because at a more strategic level, we can engage the whole community to consider why the minority has this right to change the ROP so that draconian bills and problematic funding uh, applications can be passed. They call it an attempt to combat filibustering. The other point is this, about Mr. Martin Liao's batch of amendments. One of them is actually unconstitutional. It is against the basic law. Of course, um, two external legal advisers were engaged by the president of this council to uh, this extent to show that it is unconstitutional. But uh, according to the president, since the, according to the um, two legal counsel, these are unconstitutional. Well, but I think that we need to look into these amendments very carefully whether they are indeed unconstitutional. And the government plays a role in this matter because, to my understanding, um, to my understanding of the basic law, and I'm not going to quote from Zhang Xiaoming how the CE status transcends the legislature, executive, etc. I won't um, take this uh, perspective, but even as the representative of the central authorities, the chief executive is responsible for overseeing matters that may be going against the basic law and to make sure that they will not be implemented. I'm making this point not because I'm suggesting that the chief executive can compel or coerce members on how to vote, but at least the chief executive must not dodge this issue. The Secretary for Justice or the Chief Executive herself should at least make it clear whether the pro-establishment camp's amendments are con unconstitutional or not. Recently, the Chief Executive said that the issue is very complex and it is not for her to uh, express her opinion on the um, views of both camps, but she has the political responsibility because if uh, ultimately the CE decides not to speak on the matter, it's her choice. And yet, if these are passed, and then if the court finds them unconstitutional, the chief executive should be accountable to not just the community. Our thinking is this. If it is unconstitutional, it means that um, the there is problem with um, the basic law, and this is uh, what uh, President Xi has been emphasizing over the past few years. I'm not talking about the rule of law because rule of law may mean something very different to President Xi. At least um, ruling the country by uh, the constitution at least should be taken seriously. This is something that we should uphold. Uh, we should follow the constitution in administrating Hong Kong. And if there are matters uh, relating to this principle, and I am trying my best to explain to the pro-establishment camp that if there is no need to, or, or the quorum for the committee stage is changed, will there be such a significant impact on your camp. And if it is 
not such a significant impact, and yet this proposal may be unconstitutional, may go against the basic law, and may go against Xi Jinping, uh, Mr. Xi Jinping's uh, principle of um, ruling the country uh, by administration uh, by the constitution. We need to think very carefully, especially if this amendment is proposed by Mr. Martinell from the pro-establishment camp. And I think that uh, he would be even more responsible for this. Mr. President, we believe that if the ROP is changed this way, um, it would create a crisis for our one country, two systems, and the basic law. From the perspective of politics, why should we adjourn the debate uh, on this matter? Because over the past few years, because of CY Long's doing, uh, people are having less confidence in the basic law in one country, two systems. We used to have um, the moderate pa pan Democrats and more, the more radical pan Democrats. And for the moderate ones, we believe that one country, two systems serves Hong Kong the best. We don't think that uh, Hong Kong's independence is the best for Hong Kong. But more and more Hong Kong people, and I'm not just talking about young people, but more and more Hong Kong people are losing confidence in one country, two systems. If members who are representatives of the people who have the public mandate and who forms a majority representing the people outside of this council can not do anything about the uh, ROP amendments and cannot veto draconian uh, bills, that may have a significant impact on the public. I think um, if the proposals are passed, people will be more inclined to go for Hong Kong's independence. People's hatred towards the country may grow, and it may be even more difficult to resolve um, divide between Hong Kong and the mainland. So the pro-establishment camp should rethink. Dr. Chang Chong Tai. I'm going to speak in support of Mr. Elvin Young's motion to adjourn the debate. The reason is that if we amend the ROP, it is such a motion that touches on very serious issues. And if each member is restricted to 15 minutes speaking time, it is an insult on individual members. It is an insult on the council. It is also an insult on the public and Hong Kong as a whole. Now, we are discussing or we are about to discuss the ROP's amendments. This is the ROP. We're talking about 93 rules and two annexes. 49 proposals are involved. Uh, 49 amendments constitute more than one third of the of the ROP in total. And this is a sort of a booklet of the ROP. It affects not only 7 million people in Hong Kong, but our future generations in Hong Kong. It has far-reaching implications. And there may be unforeseen, unexpected consequences. And yet each member will only be able to speak on the matter for 15 minutes. Can we have a thorough discussion by doing so? It's such a crude debate. Let's say if um, the university student union would like to amend the uh, um, memorandum of uh, association, and if the debate is only confined to 15 minutes for each uh, member of the team, uh, it's ridiculous. Not to mention that this motion affects 7 million people in Hong Kong. About the 49 amendments, why is it that it is unreasonable? And why is it that we must consider it very carefully? In terms of um, the amendments, as other members repeatedly suggest, First of all, some of them may be unconstitutional. They may be contravening the basic law. And I think that for such um, a basic law discussion, we need to 
determine whether they are unconstitutional, and we must not just casually discuss the matter because we have um, the two avenues to clarify the matter, the NPCSC and also the CFA in Hong Kong. If we are to amend the uh, ROP and on the matter of uh, constitutionality, we must not pass the buck to the CFA because we all agree that the law courts in Hong Kong should not um, uh, meddle with uh, politics in Hong Kong. But why is it that apart from um, the judicial challenge that uh, they, they may face, why are we saying that they may be unconstitutional? Well, some members just now talked about uh, Mr. Martin Liao's amendments. They have to do with the understanding of the committee stage. And in this ROP, an English phrase or term is used. It's called Committee of the Coun of the Council. So imagine if it is only understood as just another committee under this council. Why is it that during the passage of the bill, the committee uh, or the bill must go through the committee stage? If it is regarded as just a committee or um, of the council, then. It will only be regarded as uh, one of the um, panels or committees that the government should consult, and it is a change of the, our function. And we cannot really uh, find out the truth of the matter just by having a 15-minute speaking time limit, because about the committee in council, we need to contrast that with the executive arm and the administration of the government because it serves a function of monitoring the government. But according to the president or according to the um, legal advice that uh, you sought, the views could be ignored and there is no way for us to uh, elaborate on the point of constitutionality um, with, with just 15 minutes. And Mr. Martin now just uh, handed me the basic law. Article 75 suggests um, the English term. And that is to say um, the, uh, me, uh, the uh, committee of the Legislative Council. But I am referring to the uh, ROP. The ROP comes from the uh, rules uh, from the um, House of Commons in the UK Parliament. As for the basic law, the three-legged stool, uh, without the participation of um, the general public before 1997, is uh, falsification. If we take this uh, perspective, the falsification of the basic law may not be um, as useful as the experience we acquired from the drawing up the ROP based on the UK Parliament's rules. So. I think this is the attitude that we should adopt. Back to my point, apart from the uh, discussion on the Constitution, which is rather complex, I have another point to make. I don't think the crux of the matter is about balancing the powers of different political parties in this council, or that how the ROT would, ROP would favor the minority or small political parties in this council for them to fulfill their responsibility in the council. The point is, uh, currently, um, the president's powers in this council will be unmonitored and not subject to checks and balances. Of course, you would say that you'll be subject to public scrutiny, but it doesn't come with any cost. For example, you have a lot of issues about your background, about your nationality, about your um, membership being a, an FC member as the president. The public cannot pass any judgment on you. They cannot do anything to, um, to uh, rein in your power. But coming back to the system. The amendment to Rule 49 is to further expand your powers and functions. Now, I don't think the conflict of interest um, arguments um, advanced just now stand. 
uh, they're not reasonable, I don't think, but um, because uh, your powers will be expanded, you have to exercise even greater care in considering the um, agenda. So you can't just um, give each of us just 50 minutes to cover all these issues. Because it, so, you know, we're talking about expanding your powers, and before your powers expanded, my own experience today is that even when I breathe, you say I'm out of order, I'm digressing. Now, this will stay with me, and I will be talking about it for four years. So from that point of view, if you are relatively neutral, then you should um, study the rules which are relevant, which uh, relate to your powers, then they should be taken out for a separate debate. And now my sec that's the second reason why I support uh, Mr. Alvin Young's motion to adjourn the debate. And uh, I come to the crux of the matter. These 49 amendments uh, have to do with a very important element of the rules of procedure. That is, uh, whether there um, the, um, the amendments are connected or consistent. Now, these amendments certainly will touch upon some procedural requirements, and these procedures are m not merely uh, a, f a matter of form. It's about the spirit of check and balance. For our meeting procedures, already, the check and balance elements uh, have been embedded into them. For example, the uh, as we pass bills, you do you think we have all the time in the world? Uh, we just sit here and let, we listen to the officials um, to give a speech for first reading, second reading, and then there's um, a German of the bill for or there's a bills committee, and then the second resumption, second reading, and third reading. So at every stage, they, the 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 state each it serves a function. So we have scrutiny, we have discussion, and then when we vote on the amendments and so on again, so so for every stage of the process, uh, they, it serves a particular function. But now uh, we cover all these uh, 49 amendments one go, we can't um, consider them in detail. How can we possibly talk about the uh, philosophy and the rationale behind all the 49 amendments in 50 minutes? So even as, as you exercise your powers, you know, there are different um, criteria. We all know um, what the rules of procedure should govern our meetings. Now, the uh, president has the power to evict other members, but other panel chairmen or committee chairmen don't have the power. Why? Because there are different levels of uh, the powers to be exercised by the president. Some powers are, um, you know, more important than others. But we never paid attention to that, and so somehow these um, uh, rules were passed. So how come it's the same council, but because uh, you, you have institutional advantage, so you are elected the president, then you can evict me. Why? It, you shouldn't be allowed to do so. For every council, all members should have equal rights, but then for some reasons we just pass that. Why? Because um, we have um, low level, low standards. And now we are going to talk about the 49 amendments. We can't say, that, okay, this has to do with the powers of the president, the other, so it's about uh, limiting our uh, power, uh, right to uh, move a German. Uh, motions and or uh, another you know types of amendments about um, uh, resuming a meeting even after it's been aborted. So these are all issues. Of course, we could discuss, but we need to uh, have a careful consideration of the forty nine amendments. Now we've only given fifteen minutes, and then the rule the amendments are passed. Then it, it makes no difference really. Uh, to me or to my supporters, because last time when we um, um, moved this movement, uh, proposed this movement that uh, we should have uh, uh, the uh, public participation in from uh, enacting the constitution, um, maybe because you know when we sit here, maybe we will daydream. Uh, we are thinking, okay, where are we going uh, this weekend or whatever. But now, I have to repeat what I just said. Because uh, if these forty-nine amendments are uh, passed, well, I, I'm I'm sure they will be passed. 
that's not just about um, undermining this council or one country, two systems. We can't put it in just simplistic terms, rather. It uh, undermines the representative government system in which the people have confidence. So that means even in the past, uh, we don't ha we didn't have elections, but we know that you as a um, LESCO member, you will speak out for me because you're my representative. But in future, the um, what remains of our powers will be taken away. That means we can't speak out for the people. And what will happen? It's not just about any individual, but rather um, you you can you can you know set aside more funds. Uh, the you know um, you know doctors may may collude with others uh, for patients uh, to to try to take advantage of patients and so on. All these will happen. Why? Because we can no longer speak out on behalf of the people. So you could only, uh, and then people will come to the government, to the civil servants, to to vent their grievances. Well, actually, I think this is already happening. Why is it that someone um, wielded a chopper and chopped up people at the court? It's because we couldn't represent the people. Now, if we are to further limit the our powers under the rules of procedure, and then we can't monitor government effectively, then sorry, I have to say this, even if it may sound offensive. I think we must all spend time to work out, because then you will be able to run faster. As I say, I promise um, a member of the public, um, the Lehman Brothers case, um, say people voted me in because um, I'm here to fight for their rights. But then I find that even uh, in the, the system, I can't even uh, pretend to be the representative. So if I'm one of the victims of the Lehman case, I will um, come and um, you know stab you or chop you up. That's what it is. So you you have to understand this members this is not something to be taken casually and we all have to bear the consequences and i don't believe i will be the uh, first victim among the 70 of us here because i'm sure i can run faster than you i mean because if people will uh, chopper at me i can run quickly i can run fast so please uh, consider this very carefully